<laughs> Hi everyone. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> For the Simpsons fans, my name's Leonie McDonald. Welcome to tonight's talk. It's a um, talk about detox uh, for summer, of course. Who's excited about summer coming up? Who's more excited about summer coming up than the detox talk you're about to listen to? <laughs> Come on, people. <laughs> uh, as I said, my name's Leonie McDonald. I'm a naturopath. I, um, do you all know what a naturopath is? Who has no idea what a naturopath is? Okay, so <laughs> thanks, Kay. <laughs> so uh, Kay's studying naturopathy currently, uh, which is a bit of a worry. But, but basically, naturopaths use food as medicine and use supplements and herbs, etc. So um, I actually studied here at the college. I studied here around about, I think, 12 years ago. I graduated. And um, as I tell my classes, once you start here, there's no leaving. You actually stay. So welcome to the college, everyone. <laughs> I'll see you for the next 12 years. Um, tonight, I've got a little thing on my chest. Uh, they are filming this. Uh, I think they're filming that more than they're filming me. And they're um, also recording what we're talking about. So any of you that have questions, I may repeat the questions so that uh, you know everyone can actually hear it. Is that cool with everyone? Yes. Yeah. Sensational. So um, we're going to talk about the, the why to detox tonight will be where we start. We're going to take you through a journey of what, why detox is really important and how natural medicine or food as nutrition can actually help you in feeling better. Who would like to feel better, have more energy, be vibrant, be alive and, and be hot and sexy for summer? Yeah. Come on boys, hot and sexy for summer. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, good to see. What do you mean would like to be? <laughs> Who already is, exactly. So my question that I'll put to you tonight is, what's poisoning you? What's poisoning you? How many of you ever consider that as a question? How many of you? Yeah, some of you do. Some of you do, yeah. So we'll have a look at the things that actually poison us. Who noticed the foods at the front table here when you walked in tonight? Did anyone notice? Yes, I did. Does anyone particularly prefer one side or the other at this point in the, in the night? <laughs> we'll talk about those as well. So. What do you put in your body? And when we talk about detoxification, it's really important to actually consider, well, what makes us toxic? And what makes us sick? And some of the things that make us sick are the foods that we eat, but also the habits that we keep. And you'll notice I've got a, a picture up there and some of our daily habits, but consider that it's the air that we breathe, so we can't even escape it. What's in the air that we breathe? What was that? I don't want to know. That's true. I don't want to know. But really, I used to live on Vulture Street many years ago. Has anyone ever driven up Vulture Street? Every day. Every day. How busy is that? Very busy. Always congested. Always congested. And what do you normally breathe in when you're on a busy street? Fumes. Yeah. So we start with fumes. And really, the fact that the body is, is receiving fumes from the environment is um, already a problem. And we haven't even got to foods and what we do. But consider what they spray on our food to kill insects. Consider the um, unnameable, unpronounceable words that are in our cosmetics. Do any of you think of that? Have any of you read your shampoo bottles, for example? Yeah, some of you have, yeah. So it's, it's these sorts of things that are actually making us toxic. And so our bodies become overburdened and overloaded with toxicity. There's some yummy things. <laughs> who's looking at that going, yeah, no, that's not yummy. But who's looking at it going, that looks delicious, Leone. Yeah. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it Sometimes. does, yeah. It's tempting. Well, I've got one here. <laughs> does that look delicious? No. It doesn't. I know, I'm touching it. I'm going to disinfect my hand afterwards. <laughs> It's, um, you know, I've had students that have, have bought burgers from, from a place that I won't name. It happens to be the same as my surname, by the way. I have no affiliations with the restaurant. 
but I'm not going to mention that because that would be bad advertising. But I've had students that have bought burgers just like this and kept them for a whole semester unrefrigerated. Guess how much mould grows on them? None. None. Yeah, they, they don't go off. What do you think about food that doesn't go off? Is it actually food? It's not real food, is it? Lots, yeah, lots of preservatives. And goodness knows what else is in there. The Western world. The Western world. Who's heard of that description of where we lived before, living in the West? Did you ever put it together? Western world, Western diet, Western dis-ease? Western diseases. And this is literally what our bodies are, are eating. Foods that cause disease. And I just have one in my hand. Just have one in my hand. Foods that cause disease. Who thinks about that? Food causing disease. Some of you don't and some of you do, yeah. It makes sense, doesn't it? If what you put in your body is actually to feed and nourish us that the same things that you put in your body can actually make you sick. How many of you have ever pigged out, pigged out on things that you know aren't particularly good for you, and you've actually felt sick by the end of the day? There's people putting their hand. Yeah, who hasn't? Like, seriously. Come on, all you perfectionists. I know you've eaten things that you shouldn't as well. So, you know, it makes sense when you think of it that way. Food is what will heal us, but food is what will make us unhealthy as well. So let's have a look at some of the things that um, are a problem. And according to the World Health Organization, or the WHO, we've got billions of people are actually overweight. And um, 300 million are clinically obese. And guess what else? Australia has the honour of being the fattest country in the world. Ha ha, America, you didn't beat us. <laughs> you know, we always think America's going to, you know, win at everything. But in this case, Australia per capita, our population is much smaller than, than that of America. And we are the fattest country in the world according to our population numbers. Are you going on a diet? <laughs> going on a diet. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> All moving. That's right, everybody, to America. <laughs> but of course, we do follow America. We're almost there. We follow America. And I remember when I was growing up, my family saying that, you know, Australia is becoming more and more like America. Who agrees with that statement? Mm -hmm. We are, and, and unfortunately, not in the good things, in the, in the bad things, we take after them. And so, you know, we have to deal with chronic diseases. And disease is on the rise. Why, do we, why would disease be on the rise? Why is, why is our population getting fatter? Why do more people have diabetes than ever before? How many of you know people who have had some kind of cancer? Look around the room, gang. You know, when I was growing up, it was really rare for people to have cancers. Who remembers those days? Yeah. You remember it? Yeah. Don't worry, you weren't the only one that put your hand up. I did too. <laughs> yeah. So there's got to be a common link here. There's got to be a common link. Stress is part of it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. But when we get stressed, what do we eat? Junk food. Junk food, yeah. Why is it called junk food? Because it's junk. Because it's junk, yeah. Because it's rubbish, it's junk. And um, I like to call it something else in my classes, but I won't say that tonight. What do I call it, gang? Crap. I won't say that though because I don't want to offend anyone. But really, junk food is, is absolute rubbish. And that's what we all buy. And it's processed and it comes in packages. And because it looks pretty, we buy it. And we don't question, 
don't even question what are we eating. So let's have a look at the ingredients. High fats, high sugar, high salt. You know, all of these foods, all processed, all made by machines and made in, uh, with chemistry sets. How many of you have ever made a cake from scratch? Yeah. You have. What do you make a cake with? Eggs. Goodies, eggs, flour, sugar, butter, maybe some milk, yeah. Maybe some um, cocoa if we're going to make a chocolate cake, yes. Dash of vanilla essence. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked at what's in a cake mix that you buy pre-packaged? Yes. Wouldn't understand. No, you wouldn't understand. You're absolutely right, Sean. You wouldn't understand. You know, my challenge to you is to go into a supermarket and actually have a look at the cake mix and look at the actual ingredients in it and see if you have all of those ingredients in your cupboard or your pantry, fridge. How many of you think you will? No. No, it's, it's something to consider. Most of these foods are high in calories and low in nutrients. So they're high in fat, high in energy. So eating th that or this, lots of sugar, yeah, lots of energy. But where are the vitamins and minerals? Surely the colours give vitamins and minerals. Surely, right? <laughs> Maybe not. So, ew. <laughs> They're high in calories, low in nutrients. They're not actually feeding the body. They're not actually improving the health of the body. And sure, they're yummy. I grew up, my mum was a cake decorator. So I had my share of cakes growing up. And I still make cakes today, but I actually make them from scratch. Because then I know what I'm putting in them. Who else makes them from scratch? Because then you know what you're putting in them, exactly. It's something interesting. Generally, the other problem is things like this don't actually satisfy the hunger. How many of you have ever eaten a Big Mac and some fries and, you know, 10 minutes later you've been hungry for more? Yeah, absolutely. But alternatively, how many of you have ever made a hamburger from scratch at home and you've been really full after you've eaten that? Yeah. Why? Why the difference? And the answer is the chemicals. Because there's chemicals in fast food that actually block, block our brain and our body from registering that we've eaten. And they fool us into thinking we're still hungry. And when they make them, they actually know they're doing that. They actually know that these chemicals are causing us to overeat. And some of them you'll know, I promise you, and I'll go through those shortly. But if they look good, if they look good and they're advertised well, and you know, and they've got all of these important little figures across the top, surely they must be healthy. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Ha, huh, this is just like a chocolate milkshake, only crappy, crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, um, a, a picture of classic foods that will make you overeat. Who loves the Doritos and CCs and all of those corn chippy type things? Yeah. Have you ever, or even twisties and cheesels. How many of you have ever pigged out on twisties and cheesels and eaten the whole family size pack before you even realised that you'd eaten the whole family size pack. Who's done that? I know, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. But the reason, the reason that we can do that, that we can eat a whole family size serving of something is because of MSG. Who's heard of MSG? Who hasn't heard of MSG? That's right. Now, MSG is a chemical that we've been told is natural, by the way. We've been told that MSG occurs naturally in mushrooms. Show me a person 
that would eat a whole bag of mushrooms. <laughs> and there's always one in the crowd. <laughs> so do I, okay. But the difference is the MSG is not actually MSG in a mushroom. It's different amino acids, but if you extracted them individually and put them together in a chemistry set, then it would become MSG. But when it's in a food, in a natural plant food, it's not actually the chemical MSG. But in this case, all of these foods contain MSG just like fast foods, just like, who gets headaches, by the way, from MSG? Some of you do, yeah. Linked with epilepsy, linked with um, migraines and, and mood swings, but causes overeating. So why are people getting fatter? Stress. Because of the chemicals, yeah, and some stress. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a, um, if any of you are interested, there's a great app you can put on your smartphone, and it's the Chemical Maze. Or this is a, a great little book that you can actually, um, it's, it's not that huge, it's about this big. And you can actually take it um, with you in your bag when you go shopping. But if you are interested at the numbers, who's noticed numbers on packages of food? Yeah. Like, does it ever occur to you that those numbers actually are created by man with chemicals? Who thinks of that? Anyone? <coughs> yeah. So you can get this app on your phone and it will tell you what the, uh, what the additives are doing. But have a look at this, for starters. Additives are listed as numbers, easily identified using a book or a list. And some of the ones to avoid are the artificial colours, sweeteners and flavour enhancers. And I've listed MSG. But where do we find MSG? This is the amazing thing. Most people think, well, it's in Chinese food. And then some of you will realise that you need to look for these numbers. 621, but it's in over 10,000 foods. So 10,000 foods that you're potentially eating are causing you to overeat because it switches off the brain receptor that says you've had enough to eat. Why are we getting fat? That's why when you, yeah, so the question was, is that why when you eat Chinese, about 10 minutes later you want more? Who's ever done that? Yeah, exactly. But look what it's in. It's also called food gelatin. It's also called yeast extract. There's a very famous yeast extract spread, and you, you might call me un-Australian for going here. It puts a rose in every cheek, people. And it's a very famous yeast extract st spread, but who knew it was MSG? MSG damages the, the nerve cells in your brain. And in some people can bring on epilepsy. Scary, isn't it? One of the first foods people are given when they're babies is a piece of toast with MSG in Australia. Interesting. Uh, malt extract is another one. Hydrolyzed protein, soy sauce, gravy mixes and all of your seasonings and stock. So chicken stock is actually MSG. So those of you trying to avoid MSG at home, you're literally buying it and mixing it into your gravy and pouring it all over your roast or making your soup with it. A bit scary, isn't it? The chemical that is known all around the world by scientists to make you overeat. Classic. Symptoms, neck pain, heart arrhythmia, hives, palpitations, irritability, dizziness, pins and needles, changes in the in lung capacity, restlessness, headaches, migraines. And that's only listing a few. She says smiling. Ha ha, we all eat MSG. <laughs> Damn. So here's a list of some things to avoid. Artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners. Diet soft drinks. Who drinks them? 
No one's putting their hands up now. <laughs> you do. He's made me stop. Has he? Well, tonight you're going to find out why you need to stop. Why have they brought diet sweeteners onto the market? Why are these artificial sweeteners around? What are they trying to tell us to do? Drink more. Drink more. And it's safe because you won't get fat. Well, in fact, when you use artificial sweeteners, when you use artificial sweeteners, they actually, the body can't register it as sweet. And we have sweet receptors in our tongue that actually says you've just eaten something sweet, like a carbohydrate. But artificial sweeteners aren't registered by the body. They're not registered by the brain. So when you have something artificially sweetened, a diet product, once again, your body doesn't realise it's had it and so you'll crave more. And in fact, it causes overeating. But it's also linked with, you'll love this, artificial sweeteners are linked with tooth decay. And that's the other reason why they tell us to use them, isn't it? Hmm. Something to consider. If there's um, words that you don't understand on a, on a package, don't eat it. Like seriously, why do we eat things that we don't know what we're doing? Why do we put things on our body that we don't understand what they are? Because surely the government wouldn't allow it. <laughs> if it wasn't safe, exactly. Surely they wouldn't. I've prepared something for you to watch on a spa tame. Enjoy.
Who's leaving? <laughs> Just checking. Who's a bit horrified by that? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a question down here. Why is it in everything? Why is it in everything? Because it pretty much nearly is in everything. Yeah, aspartame is in a lot of things, and you'll notice the things that aspartame is in because it will actually contain the warning. Warning, this product contains phenylalanine. Have you, who's seen that on chewies? And the phenylalanine is not the issue. But there are some people born with the inability to process phenylalanine. And so for those people, they have to put a warning on packages in case the people with that particular disorder uh, wish to buy those certain things. They, they can't, it actually causes brain damage in those particular people. For the rest of us, aspartame causes brain damage, but not because we have a deficiency. It actually is linked to tumours and uh, it is linked to seizures, multiple sclerosis, blindness, Parkinson's. You can actually see all the science online for all of this. Uh, why is it used? What's the benefit of it? Why would you put it in there anyway? Why it's used is because it's very cheap to make. It was discovered by mistake. It was discovered by a scientist uh, who was actually making rat poison. And uh, while he was making the rat poison, he actually um, wiped his face and licked his lip. And uh, it tasted sweet. And that's where aspartame actually came from. So let's pop it in some soft drinks, shall we? Um, why? So, that, so that's what makes it sweet. That's what makes Yeah, so it's a combination of, of a few amino acids. So they advertise it as a natural sweetener. Uh, it is actually artificial. It's chemically derived um, extracts from amino acids. When they are combined together, it turns into methyl alcohol. Now, methyl alcohol is the most toxic alcohol on the earth for your brain. So literally, the combination of chemicals that are used are poisonous to your brain. And why is it used? Because it's cheap. Because it's cheap. And you saw up there Donald Rumsfeld. Who's heard of him? He was, um, he was one of the uh, politicians at the time in America who was um, paid handsomely to approve it. It was approved for dry goods only uh, and has actually never officially been approved to use in liquid, according to the law. Interesting, hey? But we certainly use it in liquid. How can I say all of this in this room and you can go out and buy all of this stuff with the junk in it? Well, I guess I'm not being paid by a big company to, um, to market something. I'm letting you know the information that is available. But if these things link to cancer, there's indisputable evidence of this. Big money. <laughs> yeah, but... How can this all just be what? It's exasperating, isn't it? How can this be so? How can this be so? You know, the reality is, gang, I started the night letting you know that there's certain foods that we eat that are linked with disease states. We know that. You know that diabetes, for example, is preventable. Would you agree with that? Yep. Diabetes type 2, not type 1. But type 2 is, is preventable. Cardiovascular disease is preventable. It is preventable. If you eat the right foods on this side of the table, cardiovascular disease is preventable. And of course, stress will be a problem. But generally, lifestyle, speak to any doctor and they'll say, give up smoking, don't eat fatty foods, give up the hamburgers, you know, eat more vegetables. Even doctors are saying that. But unfortunately, there's enough money to promote this stuff still being sold and enough science to prove that it's safe and enough science equals science to prove that it's unsafe. You'll have to read into it more. But not only that, the cancer industry is a sickness but a profitable industry for all of the people that make all the cancer drugs and all the machines that... There's, the there's a lot of money in medicine. Money in there's definitely a lot of money in medicine. And um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of money in food. There's not a lot of money in food. But we can actually do something about our health and be empowered to actually do something for yourselves. That's what tonight's about. So it's about me scaring you just a little bit first. <laughs> and then I'll pick you up again. 
But have a look at these things. You know, this is allowed to be sold. I've even got some here. But we all know very well that sugar is bad for you. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Diabetes makes you fat, hardens the arteries, it um, rots your teeth. You know, this is a fantastic driveway cleaner, by the way. If I, if I happen to turn you off for tonight, it's a fantastic driveway cleaner. If you get uh, oil stains on your driveway, Coke, doesn't have to be vanilla, um, but Coke will actually clean the oil stains from your driveway. Anyone used it for that? When my father had Yes. Yeah. They used to use, the, the drivers all kept a bottle of Coke in their truck, not to drink. But if they got a puncture, they used it to free up the bolts that held the wheels on. There's a lot of acid in Coke. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Kay. Holly. Uh, I used to go to the uni years ago in Cosgrove. He had a armor-coated computer. He could drop off a building doing He dropped a can of Coke on it and ate it. <laughs> so what is it doing? Yeah, Coke, Coke does tend to eat things. I mean, you've seen, you've seen the stuff on TV about Coke. Um, there's no secret there. We've seen it on Today Tonight. It must be true. <laughs> it must be true. But we know that, you know, when I was a kid, we used to put coins in Coke to clean the coins. And yet we drink that stuff. I mean, really? So... How many of you like coffee? Love coffee. Love coffee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So coffee is delicious and fantastic, but how many of you don't like coffee? How many of you choose to start your day with something that's caffeine filled and not coffee? And your excuse is, well, I'm not drinking coffee, so this is my caffeine hit. So I go back to the coffee drinkers. How many of you coffee drinkers put nine teaspoons of sugar into your coffee? No. No, it's interesting, isn't it? And yet in a can of soft drink, uh, you've got about nine teaspoons of sugar in the can, which takes us back to, oh, well, then you should drink diet soft drink. <laughs> Have I turned you off that, by the way? Mmm. <laughs> but, you know... How about this one, vitamin water, eight teaspoons of sugar in vitamin water. So something that is supposedly healthy really isn't. And, you know, why, why are those sports drinks blue? It's the energy. It's the energy, thank you. It's energy. The energy in a sports drink converts to light energy. I'm sure of it. Interesting, isn't it? So nine teaspoons. They, you know, all of the acid in soft drinks actually causes damage to our bones. It's interesting, isn't it? Think of your teeth. You know that. If you, th if you, if you drink Coke or babies. Who's ever seen a baby given a, a um, bottle of, you know, instead of milk, they've been given a bottle of Coke? Yeah. Have you seen their teeth? We know it rots things. Here's some sugar information on what it's linked with. But all of these pictures will show you how many teaspoons of sugar are in each item. And so when you look at it, you can actually get a grasp of just how much sugar you're consuming. But, you know, we don't really think about it because it tastes <laughs> yummy. Now that's a, a monstrous, um, what are they called? Milkshakey things, Milk shake. thick shake. You can tell I drink them all the time. <laughs> but your light yogurt, look how much sugar is in it. When you cut the fat out of a product, they add sugar. So all of your light products, your diet yogurts, etc., even um, reduced fat products are higher in sugar. I mean, like, obviously. Seriously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I am a bit of a fan of Miss Fields cookies, but they are full of sugar. Not the Oreo. <laughs> Ice cream. Sorbet's even worse. Look at that. And what do they ad they advertise sorbet as? Fat 
free. Now, there's, in a dinner roll, it's just showing you the com a comparison in white bread, etc., of how much sugar. But in a potato, you know how much bad press a potato gets in comparison to condensed milk that we make yummy cheesecakes with. Who loves condensed milk? Come on, who's drunk it out of the can? Come on. You know you have, exactly. Look at the sugar. Look at the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know you all want condensed milk, even though I've just shown you how much sugar's in it. <laughs> you know, it is an interesting, it is an interesting time in nutrition when all of our food is really becoming more and more man-made. Even the fresh food is becoming man-made, but the packaged stuff, you know, advertising would have us believe that if it's low fat and sugar-free, artificially sweetened, that we're not going to put on weight. That it's good for us. Somehow they imply that all of these chemically made fake foods or faux food-like substances are actually good for us, but they're really not, are they? You all know that, though. You all know that, except many of you don't want to admit it. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. I know it, but I don't want to know it because it's too yummy. <laughs> it's too yummy. So, so here's the deal. You can have this stuff, but not every day. And you can't have a bit of everything every day. <laughs> it's, you know, it's moderation. It's looking at only having it occasionally and having the good stuff more often. And it is up to you. It's up to you to make the choice. So the question is, why detoxify? And my question to you is, what is your number one health goal? Do you have a health goal? Live long enough to be a problem to my grandchildren. Live long enough to be a problem to your grandchildren. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's a great goal. That's a great goal. So let's have a look at what happens when you detoxify. We do it to clean the blood. That's the, you know, that's the thing. Who's read The Liver Cleansing Diet by Sandra Cabot? Anyone? Who's heard of it? Yeah, yeah, everyone's heard of The Liver Cleansing Diet. Fantastic book. And she actually explains how to detoxify and how the body actually detoxifies. But the why should we detoxify is important in there. And so the why is because we want to get some rubbish out of our bodies. We want to move some of the rubbish from the food and lifestyle and the air that we breathe and the chemicals that we're putting on. We need to move that out of the body so that our bodies will maintain health. When you consider that every single day your cells are replacing themselves, every single day, you know that, right? Cells divide, they replicate, some die off, new ones are built. Well, what are they being built from if it's not from our food? So we're going to eliminate, eliminate toxins from the body. And there's a bit of a process in doing that. When do you want to achieve your health goal? When do you want to be healthy? When would you like to have more energy? When do you want to look younger? Right now. Right now, exactly. Right now, Leonie. Make me well. Make me well, exactly. So let's have a look at the symptoms. Maybe some of you have got these symptoms. Check them out. Fatigue is the most common symptom in toxicity. Who's always tired? Who's tired right now and too tired to put their hand up? <laughs> Headaches. Headaches are another one. Muscle and joint pain, gastrointestinal problems, digestive imbalances, changes in the heart, cardiovascular disorders, colds and flus, depression, irritability, confusion, allergies. How many of you have one or more of those symptoms? Yeah, 
It's really common, right? It's really common. And this is the thing. When you consider that food is our medicine, not medicine. You know, when you get a headache, you don't actually have a deficiency in a Panadol. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Has anyone ever thought of that? Panadols are great, don't get me wrong, they work and they'll, they'll get rid of that headache. But what caused the headache? Maybe it was your neck out or that stress and tension, but maybe it was something that you ate. Maybe it's something that your body's lacking. Something to consider. We don't have deficiencies in drugs. How true is this? <laughs> like seriously, how true is this? <laughs> Does my butt look big in this? <laughs> All right, let's have a look at food. If you keep doing what you're doing now, if you keep eating the way that you're eating now, will you achieve your health goal? Not really. Not really? Will your health improve? Some of you who are actually um, students here at the college are going, yes, Leone, if I keep eating the way you've been telling me to eat, yes, I will achieve my goal. And others of you are going, I was dragged along tonight and now I know who's brainwashing them. <laughs> who's thinking that? <laughs> it's me, everyone, it's me. The supermarket is a very treacherous environment if you're trying to eat well or eat healthily. It's a very sophisticated landscape that's been designed to extract as many dollars from your wallet as possible. Everything from the music, the number of beats in the music you hear, to the location of products on the shelves, to the layout of the whole thing is designed to get you to buy as much as possible. So for example, the milk will always be the maximum number of paces from the door. And the reason is that most people want to go get a quart of milk and they want them to pass as many other things on the way as possible. So the path to the milk will um, have many, many temptations along it. The height of items in the supermarket, the eye level, is the most profitable items, the highest markup. Lower profit items that might be better for you are at the bottom. So you'll always see the highly processed cereals up here, and maybe the oatmeal, less processed, less profitable down here. In general, the supermarket is laid out so whole foods are on the perimeter. By whole foods, I mean unprocessed real food, whether it's produce, milk, fish, meat. And in the middle is the most profitable, highly processed junk food. So one way to navigate the food market if you're concerned about your health and you're trying to avoid eating a lot of junk is try to shop along the edges and try not to go into the middle or go into the middle as little as possible uh, and you'll do a lot better. That's Michael Pollan. He, um, he's an author of a, a number of books. Really good read if you ever want to read some good information about nutrition. Michael Pollan is the, uh, is the man that you just saw then. Um, he talks about food from the perspective of, of going shopping and imagine you were taking your grandmother or your great-grandmother or in some cases your great-great-grandmother with you. How many foods would she recognise today? None. None, yeah. Only the ones around the edge. Yeah, exactly. So. This is what I call uncommon sense eating. Uncommon sense, because it seems that so many people don't have the common sense that we used to have around eating food. So it's become very uncommon. But I promise you, when I go through this, you'll already know it. You'll already know it. But let's look at the uh, cycle of, of uh, toxicity and, and healing. So. You can start anywhere, but let's start with normal eating. Who's going yummy? <laughs> yummy. Normal eating. And then we feel toxic and we put on weight and we get headaches and we take a pill to fix our ill, to hide the symptoms. And then we go, that's it, I'm going to detox. 
And then we start doing all of these fantastic things. Which one looks nicer, by the way? <coughs> oh, yeah, it looks nice and fresh, doesn't it? So we start eating well and having all of these beautiful, healthy things. And we take some supplements, and I'll go through some supplements with you as well. They're optional, but they help the body to process toxins. So just changing your diet can actually lead to you getting a headache. Who's ever given up coffee? How bad was that? Bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So ta ta giving up sugar as well is really bad. bad. Yeah. It's really difficult. So taking some supplements to help support that can be useful. Then you get more energy, and then we feel really great, and we go out and celebrate, and we go back to our normal eating, and then we become toxic. <laughs> Who can relate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So real food. Michael Pollan said, shop around the perimeter of the supermarket. Walk the perimeter. I've got real food here. You know, it's an interesting thing that kids nowadays don't actually know where these sorts of things come from. And they don't know what they are. That's true. They don't know what they are. In case you're wondering, it's a carrot. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> it is a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a potato. <laughs> yes. What about, um, the, even though you're shopping in the Woolworths or Coles? So even though you're shopping in Woolies or Coles. And you just go around the perimeter. And well, you're walking the perimeter. A lot of those really good foods for you are covered in chemicals. A lot of those really good foods for you are definitely covered in chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are definitely covered in chemicals. And that's why I say Eat organic. Eat organic. Um, and I'm not suggesting that you buy organic from the supermarket. I'm suggesting you go to the markets because they're cheaper. And, um, and I travel for uh, 35, 40 minutes each weekend to buy my organic produce. So those of you that are going, it's too far away. Um, you know, generally within about half an hour from your house, you'll be able to find a market that sells organic food. And the reason why I recommend organic is because it doesn't have chemicals, but we'll touch on that in a minute. But whole natural foods, real food, real vegetables, foods that actually look like they came out of the ground or grew off a tree or um, milked from the cow, if you must. But even that is a problem. But I'm not going to go there tonight. <laughs> Those that know me are laughing because they know what I'd usually say. <laughs> Whole grains, a whole grain. This is a whole grain. They're oats, rolled oats. Who eats them? Yeah, that is a whole grain. I'll show you something that is advertised as a whole grain, but you have to see if you can recognize my drawing. It's advertised as a whole grain, isn't it? Yeah. Well, in fact, it came from a whole grain. The whole grain was wheat. But then it was processed and stripped, and all of the goodness was taken out of it, and it was pulverized, and then it was bleached, and then it was processed some more, and then it was stuck together with sugar and chemicals, and then it was roasted and called Iron Man food. <laughs> whole grain. It's not, you know, Cocoa Pops. <coughs> Cocoa Pops, whole white rice. Really? <laughs> is this a whole grain or is this a whole grain? And clearly the one that actually looks like the grain is still the grain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So eating whole grains. <laughs> psyllium. Who's heard of psyllium? Who's heard of Metamucil? <laughs> Who's horrified that Metamucil is filled with aspartame? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Metamucil is made from psyllium. You can actually buy psyllium for around about three or four dollars, yet Metamucil costs you around about 18, I think. It's actually cheaper to buy the real thing without the artificial flavors and colorings and cancer causing additives. And this one is actually good for you. But if you use it, make sure you drink more water. Otherwise, 
things will slow down in your body, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Superfood, oh, by the way, and that, that will help to lower your cholesterol. Eating good fibre helps lower your cholesterol. But another thing that helps you lower your cholesterol are vegetables. All your colourful vegetables will help lower cholesterol. And one that's really good for you that won't make you fat is this. Yes, it's actually ripe. It's good to go, yeah. Avocados. Haven't they got a bum wrap as well? And they don't make you fat. They're a plant. They're a plant. Mix it with um, sour cream and call it guacamole. <laughs> and that might make you fat. But, well, they do. Or do you make it with cheese or something? No. Well, I don't either. <laughs> but colourful foods, lots of colours. All of those delicious colours add vitamins and minerals and nutrients to your body. Include colour, variety, texture, shape. Eat 10 to 20 vegetables per day. If you're in my class here, I'd say how many? 20. Just eat 20. But eat 10 to 20 veggies a day. You can do that with a salad at lunchtime and a stir fry for dinner. If you base 80% of your diet on good, whole, nutritious foods, then you can fit the treats in and your body is healthy. So, I'll go to the superfood shortly. <laughs> Got them Add more veggies. They're rich in nutrients. They cleanse. They're high in fiber. You can have them raw. You can have them juiced. You can have them in a stir fry. They're fantastic. Have a couple of pieces of fruit in a day. Don't have too many. But if you want to reduce the amount of sugar from fruit that you have, have berries. Berries are fabulous. Blueberries. Strawberries, raspberries, who likes their berries? Fantastic. And you can buy frozen organic berries in the supermarket on the edges. <laughs> they cost a bit more, but you don't get the chemicals. And that's a good thing. And drink plenty of this stuff. Drink plenty of water. Who doesn't like the taste of water? Some of you, so flavour it. Fresh mint leaves, fresh strawberries, fresh fruit into the water and it makes it taste really good. A pinch of sea salt to quench your thirst or Himalayan salt to quench your thirst in summer. Great replacement of electrolytes, very good for you. And doesn't affect your heart like table salt does. So, uh, sorry? Could you could give that to a baby. You could give that to a baby, salt, yes. depending upon their age. I'll talk to you about it after the class, yeah. Um, a drop of stevia. Who's heard of stevia? Stevia is the alternative to the cancer-causing aspartame. Isn't that good news? There's an alternative. So you can try that, but it's really ultra-sweet. So where you'd normally have a teaspoon, you'd only use one drop. <coughs> Do some of this. <laughs> you know, when you detoxify, you can't detoxify your body if you're not using this and this daily. In order to move toxins out of your body, they come out through a big tube. <laughs> they come out through a big tube. So when you eat more veggies, you have to make sure that you're going daily because uh, daily, even twice a day is normal. When you're eating the right foods, that'll happen naturally. But that's how you detoxify. So my question is, what will you change to achieve your health goal? Food. Food. <coughs> Food, yeah. Because without making a change, it just stays the same. So I've got a list of um, supplements and superfoods. Who's heard of superfoods? Yeah. That you can use. Now these are just random recommendations. I'm not telling you all to go out and get these, but here's some ideas and some good brands, and I'm not affiliated with, with anything. <laughs> but just so you know, there's some, there's some options here. 
Sometimes we need to supplement because of the way that food is processed, because of the stripping and refining that goes into you know, things like cocoa pops, because of storage, pesticides, insecticides. Look at the chemicals that are coming out. And my question is, if I sprayed more teen, if I sprayed more teen onto this food in front of your eyes, would you eat it? No. Why not? I can see it. Because you can see it and it's poison. When you're buying food that's not organic, just because you can't see the spray being sprayed, it doesn't mean it's not there. So if you're not eating organic, make sure you wash your food and wash it thoroughly. Because the sprays that they use kill insects. And I don't know about you, but I don't use Mortine as a breath freshener. <laughs> So I've got vitamin C. Who takes vitamin C? Vitamin C is great for the immune system. It's great for our skin. It's great for your cardiovascular system. It helps unless, to... Unless it's a nice chewy vitamin C tablet that has a spartan. <laughs> unless it's a nice chewy vitamin C tablet that has a spartan. That's true. Because a lot of them do. You've got to read the ingredients of your supplements as well. But some of them aren't listed. So I've got one for you. This one's available in um, health food shops and chemists. It's uh, non-genetically modified. It's a buffered vitamin C, which means it's not highly acidic, because sometimes vitamin C can have that burning sensation. This is a nice one. Take, uh, the dosage is one teaspoon, and literally you would need to take around about um, up to four teaspoons a day when you're detoxifying. Or when you want to help to get over a cold and flu, you would take even more in divided doses. Fourteen, you said. Fourteen spoons. Four. Oh, four. <laughs> four teaspoons, not fourteen. Um, generally, um, if you take too much vitamin C, you'll be going back to that previous slide where I showed you the toilet. Um, you will get some vitamin C from fruit and veggies, and, um, and I've got some pictures here. When you're detoxifying, it's generally not enough. The body needs help to detoxify. The body needs help because what you're doing is you're literally releasing toxins from your fat cells. And unless you help the body deal with the poisons that are being released, then the body struggles. So here's, some, here's a nice option. But you can certainly eat these things as well. I do. I take it and I, um, I use it. So I've got a list of foods, berries, citrus, Capsicums, chilies, who eats any of these? Fantastic. So you're getting some vitamin C in your diet already. Problem with vitamin C is when vitamin C is exposed to the light or air or heat, you lose the vitamin C. And that's why a supplement can often be necessary as well. This is a detox formula, another nice one. Um, if you are going to do a detox, again, taking vitamin C and something to support your body and the elimination channels can be really useful. So I've listed brands that, that are um, safe and recommended to me by students and recommended to me by people in health food stores as the ones that they get the most feedback on. So Fusion is a nice brand. Probiotics, who takes probiotics? So who eats yogurt? Yeah. So certain yogurts will be high in, in beneficial bacteria. Jalna is one of them that's available in the supermarket. Um, but just on that, you don't actually get enough beneficial bacteria by eating yogurt. So if you've been on antibiotics, or if you've pigged out on sugar, or you've got some kind of gastrointestinal upset, Eat some yogurt, sure, don't eat the flavoured stuff. <laughs> Unless it's Jolna, that's okay. But um, you will need a supplement after antibiotics. Who's ever been on antibiotics? Yeah, so many people. And a lot of doctors nowadays are actually recommending probiotics after, yeah. after antibiotics. Here's another one for liver support, because most people realise that the liver's going to do all the work. But I warn you, if you start a detox, 
don't start working the liver straight away because the liver will be working overtime and if you take a supplement then the liver will actually start detoxifying your whole body and it can actually give you headaches and make you feel a bit sick. So we go slowly with, with detox. The greens, the greens, I'm not talking a political party, I'm talking about a superfood. Who's heard of chlorella? Who's heard of chlorophyll? Spirulina? Green barley. So this fits into this category and, and this is fantastic for cleaning the blood. Mopping up heavy metals. Who's heard of heavy metals? And you get a lot of those from the pesticides, etc., that are, are sprayed onto food. I've mentioned eating berries as they're low in sugar and high in fibre. And they have so many beneficial actions, but the best thing, they taste good. They taste good. Here's a superfood, maca. Who's heard of maca? So maca is a hormone balancer. You can put it in smoothies. Um, generally about a tablespoon per day you build up to. Start with a teaspoon and work your way up to a tablespoon. It tastes a little bit bitter, but in a smoothie or I have it on my oats in the morning with a lot of other things. Um, but it tastes fantastic when you mix it with other things. Goji berries. Who's eaten goji berries? These are great, really good for you, really sweet as well, but you can make them into bliss balls. Now, if you collected one of these on your way in tonight, I've actually got a recipe for bliss balls on this side. So. You can actually add some goji berries. I haven't got them in that particular recipe, but you can actually add them as a good source of vitamin C. But something that is in my recipes that I've given you is cacao. Now, cacao is a um, chocolate. Who loves chocolate? Detox with chocolate. You can have chocolate smoothies. I've got a smoothie recipe for you in that handout. And you can literally have a chocolate smoothie made with this stuff because it's so high in nutrients and so good for you that it will actually support your body in detox. Is that the best news you've heard all night? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so an idea for a healthy eating plan. Many people ask me, what should I eat, Leonie? What should I eat? And so starting the day, you know, with a nice bread. I'm not necessarily recommending this brand, but it is, you know, pretty good. But it's, see the colour of it? Which one's got the most fibre? <laughs> Which one's going to be better for you? Which one gets the most marketing? And if I use a magnifying glass, I still won't find the fibre. Because guess why? There isn't any. But there is fibre in this one. So don't believe the ads. This is just bad for you. And again, it doesn't matter which brand. <laughs> if it's white, it's bad. So some egg and toast. Or who likes egg with uh, English spinach and salmon and a little bit of hollandaise sauce? Yes! Yum! Now the hollandaise sauce isn't necessarily healthy for you, but it's delicious. You can make your own. And you can make your own, and you're not having a lot. What about preservatives in bread? Um, preservatives in bread are an issue, absolutely. But we've got to start with baby steps. So if I can get people off white bread and onto a darker coloured bread, you know, we're getting there. And maybe I'll encourage you all to buy bread makers soon. <laughs> yeah, thermomix. Or a thermomix. Um, oats with lots of additives. Hummus. Who likes hummus? Hummus is a great detoxifying food. It's high in fibre. It's good for your immune system. And it's actually yummy. <laughs> but it actually carries toxins out of your body as well. It's a perfect protein. Hummus is a source of protein, vegetarian protein. So at lunchtime, when you have your salad, 
You can actually have some hummus and an egg. Make sure it's free range organic. Why? Because what? Antibiotics. Yeah, because of all the antibiotics and all the changes that they've made to the um, the chooks, but also the cruelty. They taste better. And they taste better. A wrap with veggies. Who likes wraps? Yeah, see all this food you already like. Some nuts and seeds with your fruit. Nuts and seeds to slow down the absorption of sugar. Homemade pizza. Who makes homemade pizza? You know, leave off the salami. <laughs> you can actually use organic chicken and put on 10 veggies and instead of mozzarella, you could use some feta. Much better for you, higher in flavour, you don't need as much. You could put a little bit of parmesan, so you're still getting the cheesy flavour without the mucus. Without the mucus. A stir fry with 10 veggies. Yes, I'm not going there tonight. Trust me, you don't want me to. <laughs> On this handout, these are the recipes that I've got for you. When you're doing a detox, you can actually eat all of these things. Do they look good? Yes. They look good, right? And this is the important thing. When you change the way you eat, you're actually detoxifying just by eating good food. Who's happy about that? Mm. Nourishing your body, preventing disease, living long enough so that you can be a problem to your grandkids. All the things that you aim for in life, you can get just by changing your diet. It's something to consider. I've got quinoa up there. Who's tried quinoa? Mm. Quinoa's fantastic. A good source of protein, a great source of fiber, lower GI than rice, more nourishing. It's a superfood. Brown rice is better than white rice. Quinoa is better than all rice. Yeah, quinoa is fantastic. You can have it, you know, as a sweet or a savory. It's fabulous.
there was a point where I had allowed myself to get to 300 pounds. And that world, as opposed to the current world, uh, is vastly different. Life was just not fun, you know? The only fun I had was watching people on TV having fun. I, I was over 400 pounds. And I had very bad sleep apnea. I was borderline type 2 diabetic. I was a cheeseburger away from a heart attack. And I said, no more. This is how we are as mammals. It's not your fault. You're programmed to put on fat whenever there is food available. I was 31 when I realized I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to take care of myself and I am sick. And so I had to go back and learn all the things that I wish I had known as a child. Sugar is without question the cocaine of the food world, but they kind of get away with hiding that drug within quote unquote food. Sugar is in everything. In America, we're eating about 22 teaspoons of sugar a day. When we get onto our real diet, in the sense of what a species habitually eats to sustain itself, we don't have to think about these things anymore. This is a really prevalent problem today because people are overfed, uh, but they're also starving to death. survival laws and the whole dieting paradigm is flawed it's not just what you're eating it's also what's eating you <clears throat> that's a um a great movie by the way it's it's available to watch online uh, there's another one called food matters which is fantastic as well and it's it's all about common sense eating and it's all about everyday people relearning how to make themselves healthy without the need for anyone else to get in touch with drugs or doctors etc so it's really quite simple all you need to do is to make a change who's willing to make a bit of a change in something yeah okay great great in something in something. <laughs> so the, um, like I said, this little handout that I've given you has some ideas of what to include and what to avoid on a detox. I just want to point something out. I have in the foods to avoid list, I have butter and margarine. Now butter, I want you, and margarine, I want you to avoid both of them while you're detoxifying. But once you finish detoxifying, Throw away the margarine, go back to butter. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> go back to butter because it's real food and margarine is still plastic. So there's, um, there's a couple of sides to it. The other thing, if you've picked up this handout tonight, some of you on the way in asked me, okay, Leonie, so I'm going to make all these changes, but how do I know what to cook? So um, two of our students from the college, one a naturopath who graduated at the beginning of the year and another one who's still studying, runs a raw food class. So um, that's coming up. It's actually Christmas treats, so it's all yummy stuff, making, um, making sweets that are actually healthy for you. So who would have thought you'd come to a detox night and actually find out about healthy sweets? So there are some options. Does anyone have any questions? I do, actually. Um, I noticed that um, for the whole you know, uh, class, you didn't recommend any meat. So I'm OK, so, so it's been noticed that I didn't recommend any meat yes. during the class. Um, actually, on this, on this, you'll notice that I've actually got consume organic free-range chicken, eggs, and grass-fed meat. If, in fact, you do eat animal products, mm. then um, make sure it's grass-fed meat, not um, grain-fed. Because they advertise grain-fed, don't they? Yeah, they do. So why am I saying grass-fed? Because that's 
because it's natural. How many cows actually go and eat corn in the paddock? They don't. What tuna? Um, there's, a, there's a couple of options with tuna. Um, I generally would choose the ones that are line caught, like sath coal. Um, the, the, a lot of the tunas are you know, caught with the, the big nets and things. The unfortunate thing nowadays is that uh, many of our fish are becoming toxic because of the toxins that people are putting into the ocean. So when I went through naturopathy 12, when finished 12 years ago, uh, we were actually told to eat fish three times a week. And now I generally only recommend fish occasionally, but because of the toxins in the ocean. So it's a, it's a really unfortunate thing that, that we're actually poisoning our great source of food. So saf coal um, or another line court option. Somebody had a question over here. How do you suggest how we wash our vegetables? How to wash veggies. That's a great question as well. Um, it's really simple to wash your veggies. You can use a solution of water in, in the sink and a slurp. I'll give you the exact amounts. Are you all watching? This much, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is great because it will help to break down some of the chemicals on your food and um, it helps to clean them. On the harder foods, on your potatoes and apples and, and things with a, a harder skin, use a scrubbing brush, like a, a nail brush that you'd use in the shower. Don't use the one in the shower. <laughs> you know, just saying. Get another one. I have a, um, I have a loofah glove that I use um, and I literally put it on and, and wash that and then I can wash, no, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Broccoli is hard to wash. I generally, well, I buy organic to, for starters, but um, I generally uh, use water and apple cider vinegar for, and, and pop that into the sink and then sort of shake it off and dry it off. Um, mostly I wash my veggies just before I eat them, especially broccoli because it's harder to dry. And when, when veggies get a bit wet, they go a bit sort of stodgy. So, but apple cider vinegar. In the um, health food shops, you can buy an actual vegetable cleaner and it's um, a mixture of apple cider vinegar and colloidal silver. So, you could actually make your own. That might be cheaper than a health food shop, but apple cider vinegar. Do you haven't mentioned anything about genetically modified food? I haven't mentioned anything about genetically modified food uh, because that is most definitely a, a full-on conversation on its own. But um, certainly you'll notice in my handout that I do mention to avoid genetically modified <coughs> foods. So I'll, I'll leave that one hanging. First of all, I'd like to say to you, I think it's good that people like yourself are um, indulging the, the rest of us who don't understand, uh, know about this stuff. Yeah, thank but you. My question to you is, um, I have a lot of family members who come from low socioeconomic areas and yeah. backgrounds. What would your advice that you could give me so that I could tell them for the best way for them to keep healthy? Because they, like, it's nothing for me to be able to give my wife money so she can go to raise organic and she influenced, yeah. she's one of your students, she influenced me and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But, like, for some of my cousins, like, I'm in They can't afford it. They can't afford it. Yeah. To, to, um, That's a great question. So the, so the question is, what do you do when people can't afford it? You know, what do you do when people can't afford to buy all this superfood? And um, you know what I say is, is fresh is best. So wherever you can add healthy, fresh foods into your diet, then that's going to be an improvement. So wherever you can, it's small changes. I tell my, um, my guys in my classes, I say, baby steps. You know, don't try and do every single thing at once. If you do every single thing at once, generally we fail. But if you do one little thing here and another little thing there, quite often you'll get into a new routine and you'll use the things that you have in your pantry and you'll use the things that you currently have in your fridge and then when you replace them, you replace them with something healthier. So step by step, but fresh, the fresher the food, the better it is. So even when they're buying it from a, a supermarket, like the dead food, I mean the um, fresh food people, <laughs> uh, washing them, 
washing them, and, and that's something that, that we can afford to do. So. And fresh is actually less expensive. Fresh is generally less expensive. When it doesn't come in a packet, it is um, less expensive. Colly. If you have um, a backyard or even a container, you could grow your own. Yeah. And then once you've actually started, it's free. That's right, yeah. So Growing your own. Who's got a veggie patch? Fantastic, yeah. You know, the, the, the thing we're short on nowadays is land space. So a veggie patio is a, is a great option. Yes. It seems to be that my roll dots these days fizz um, up or bubble up a lot, so there's something else in it. Yeah, um, so, the, so the comment was that rolled oats these days tend to fizz up and bubble up. I, I think, unfortunately, uh, the processing machines that a lot of f processed food and even rolled oats to a certain extent are processed um, are processed with um, machines that are using other things. So oats, for example, can be contaminated with wheat, for example. So uh, you can buy organic oats. They don't tend to fizz. I, um, I actually buy gluten-free oats um, and they're, they're processed on a machine that is guaranteed to be wheat and gluten-free. They don't tend to fizz. Well, th there can be a, a number of things. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of sprays and chemicals used in all produce nowadays, so it could be any number of chemical reactions. Yeah. Soy products. What are my thoughts on soy products? Um, you know, soy... Who likes soy milk, by the way? Like soy milk? You know, my, my thoughts on soy products, soy is one of the most genetically modified foods in the world. And as such, I would recommend that you avoid all sources of soy that have been genetically modified, for sure. However, uh, there are a number of soy products that are non-genetically modified. And some people respond very well, health-wise, to soy. Some people do not respond well to soy, and it can actually have a hormonal impact to some people. My philosophy has always been if it's not broken, don't fix it. So in other words, if, if you enjoy soy milk, make sure it's a non-genetically modified soy made from a whole soybean. Bond soy as an example, uh, Aussie soy, another. Pure harvest is another, yep, thank you. Um, you know, choose choose a milk that is that is actually a, a healthier option and from a whole bean. So, I kind of skirted around that, but but basically, some people are good on it. I'm actually good on soy, um, but my best friend is really bad on soy. Do, do you know what I mean? You just you just don't know. What's this thing uh, with per permeate in milk? Permeate wow. in milk. Perme who's heard of permeate in milk? Yeah, permeate is actually a, um, it's a byproduct of milk production. Now when they make uh, the non-organic stuff, they actually um, add a lot of chemicals to the milk as they're processing it to actually uh, make the milk have a certain amount of fat and a certain amount of carbohydrate and a certain amount of protein. So it standardizes the milk. The permeate is um, a byproduct that they mix, fr mix from milk production into milks to make them stock standard. So it's a waste product mixed into milk to make them, I think it's 3% protein. But even some organic milks have... Um, that I'm not aware of, yeah. So the comment was even some organic milks have permeate, I don't know. Um, there is a milk that I know is permeate free, of course you're meant to bathe in it. <laughs> it's called Cleopatra's milk. Some of you I know bathe on the inside with Cleopatra's milk. I would never recommend that because that would be illegal. Um, however, on occasion myself, I will bathe internally with Cleopatra's milk. Is fertilizer Fertilizers can be considered chemicals depending upon what sort of fertilizer, but we do have organic fertilizers. Um, you, can have, you can have your own worm farm, for example, and use worm tea on your vegetables. And some fertilizers, you know, like cow manure and, and chicken, etc., compost, thank you, are, are very healthy options when they're organic. Okay, last two questions. Anyone else got a question? Yes, you've mentioned uh, chemicals like 
that we expose ourselves? Can you recommend a shampoo? So the um, the question is, can I recommend a um, a cosmetic range of shampoos, etc., uh, that are lower on chemicals that we're exposing ourselves to? Generally, um, I buy organic and I read the ingredients and my, my advice to you would be it's not necessarily a brand, it's more read the actual ingredients. I buy them from health food stores and places like that and if I can actually understand the ingredients and they're made from herbs and they're made from um, words that I understand or plants that I, I recognise and essential oils etc then I, I buy it. Um, but most of them have numbers and, and abbreviations, and I certainly don't buy those. Let me go back to the sugar. Sugar. Um, when I detox, I get what's called the detox flu. So um, detox and ends up with the detox flu. How do you get past that? How do you? Vitamin do you get C. Off? Okay. Vitamin C and bioflavonoids is fantastic to help you get off those sorts of things. Chromium would be another supplement. That would be useful. Now, just um, just to mention, if uh, you are going to do a detox, it is contraindicated in pregnancy, which means it's not advisable for pregnant women or for lactating women because the toxins will go through the breast milk or travel past the placenta and um, can actually cause complications. What's your opinion on Nutlex? What's my opinion on Nutlex? My opinion on Nutilex is um, very much the same as any, any margarine. <laughs> Buy a tub of your most favourite, most expensive margarine, put it in your garage away from, you know, the dog and the cat, leave the lid off it, forget about it for six months and see what's eaten it. That's my opinion of margarine. Guess what will eat it, by the way? Nothing. Nothing. Cockroaches won't touch it. Rats won't touch it. So, you know, if vermin's not eating it, it's no good. Okay, last question. What would be your alternative? Butter. Oh, um, avocado. Avocado. Just avocado. Avocado. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I trust. I trust you got something valuable from tonight. Over to Kim. Guys, before you all go, I just want everyone, you've already given a round of applause, but a big round of applause for Leone, one of our wonderful teachers here at AIS. So thank you. <laughs> if you haven't registered and you'd like to come to more events like that, please do on the, on the sheets. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Um, there's a, there'll be a few staff members around to, to answer some questions if you'd like um, to know more um, about your summer detox and nutrition. But good luck with it all, and thanks for coming. Thank you.